Hey guys. All right. So I just want to share a quick message. It's Friday. I know so often the weekend can be this like chaotic mess when you are on the journey of becoming healthy. And I just had some things come to mind of like, I think, hopefully you guys know, I've been like the full gamut. I've been like standard American diet, overweight. I've gone like super crazy obsessed with exercise and food, crazy lean, you know, psychotic obsession. And I'm in this like really, really wonderful place with food and health. And it's just all joy and ease. And like for a while, I didn't even know that was possible. I was like, nope, it's just always going to be hard. And it's not. It's not. And I'll tell you, I, these are the two things that have brought me into that wonderful middle place that I really, 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 really want to share with you guys. And the first thing I was like, dude, what is it that makes a health journey? Like what, what just F's it up for people? And the first one is labeling foods good and bad mm -hmm. and having some sort of any sort of restrictive mindset. If you can get rid of good, bad thinking around anything, <laughs> but particularly food for this conversation and start looking at it as what do I get out of that choice? What am I, what's it doing for me? And just becoming aware, removing shame, removing guilt, removing, I failed, removing, I won. You didn't win because you ate a strawberry and lose because you ate a cupcake. Mm -mm. If you can switch it, what's up chef girl, Hawaii, aloha, <laughs> um, so if you can switch that mentality into, I can obviously eat whatever I want, because you obviously can, right? We live in a very abundant world right, right now anyway. We're very lucky. I'm at a grocery store right now. <laughs> I'm in the parking lot. And I can go in there and get whatever I want. There's donuts, there's cookies, there's, you know, all the things. There's apples, there's meat. All I can eat whatever I want. I got a little debit card and I can go in there and choose whatever I want. And so can you. And so if I, but if I were to get into this mentality of I can't have those donuts, it screws everything up because it makes you want them more. So instead, if you can put everything back on the table and just look at it as what do I get out of that and get the, a more mature energy around food of what am I get? What is this? What's happening as a result of the choices that I'm making and just being real with myself and that's it. There's no judgment on it. It becomes so much easier to make choices in your own best self interest. So I, gosh, I remember I've, I've gone through like the emotional eating, the binging, like all of that stuff. And all of it was a result of me restricting and labeling things as good as good and bad. And that little inner rebel comes out and it's like, oh, you said I can't have brownies. Watch this. And it makes you like a maniac. So we got to get rid of good, bad thinking around food. It's just what am I, of course I can have it. And do I like the results that I'm getting from those choices? End of story, period. It's like that with everything in life. Yeah, what serves your best purpose? And don't forget to live. Yes, exactly. I eat goodies sometimes. I eat pizza sometimes. I do not sweat it at all. I enjoy it fully. And that is the secret. That is the secret is enjoy it. If I, I love cheesecake. Oh my gosh. Am I alone on this? Is cheesecake not just an amazing part of earth life? <laughs> right? So if I'm gonna have cheesecake, first of all, I'm going to have cheesecake when I really want cheesecake, right? If I really want it, I'm going to have it and I'm going to enjoy every single bite of it. And I promise you, you will eat a normal amount of it if you just allow yourself to enjoy it and savor it and be like, oh my gosh, I love earth. I love this body. Thank you, body that allows me to taste cheesecake. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, so getting rid of good, bad thinking around food is so, so huge. Yeah, cheesecake is love. Yes, it's wonderful. And I love pizza. I am never living a life without pizza in it. I, oh, key lime pie. Don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. It's so good, right? So it's like, it's okay to enjoy those things. I just know that if all I ever ate was key lime pie, I would start feeling crappy. I'd be hungry all the time. I wouldn't have good energy in my workouts. My mental power would go down, right? So sometimes is it worth it for me to have some cheesecake? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but most of the time, Ooh, passion fruit cheesecake. Now we're getting crazy. Now we're getting crazy. <laughs> All right. So is it worth it sometimes for me though? Absolutely. And I enjoy every minute of it. I love a story that Tony Robbins tells of when he met his wife and she's a nutritionist. And I, of course that pinged off of me and they were like on their first date or something. He's like, all right, this, this chick's going to get me super, you know, disciplined with my eating and all that. And he's like, we ate a healthy meal. And then she, she was like, can we see a dessert menu? And he was like, whoa, 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 what? And she was like, you gotta live. 
<laughs> right? So it doesn't have to be so freaking brutally hard. And I'm telling you, if you have a restrictive mindset, you will end up becoming a binger. You will. It is a natural consequence of a restrictive mindset around food. So think instead, what does my body need? Here you go, body. Here's lots of nutrients. You're going to love this. And because you have so many nutrients and you're so strong, you're also going to be totally fine with a little bit of this or that or whatever sometimes. And I'm going to enjoy it every little second of it. Um, okay. The other thing, the one of the biggest, biggest hitters, it's, it's kind of twofold. I'm like squeezing this into one, but it's, it's around sleep, first of all. If you want a fat burner, it is free 99. It's called go to bed earlier. Go to bed earlier. Notice I didn't say sleep in. I said go to bed earlier because guess what? Nothing productive for your life happens after nine o'clock at night. Are you building the life of your dreams after nine? No. (laughs) And if you are, I would dare say it's not the most optimal time to do that because you're tired. You're not running full tilt. So like go to bed earlier, start to shift your evening routine, build wins into it. So you like going to bed earlier. I have little remote candles in my room. They're like, you know, battery operated, but it's like, I don't have all this like harsh light coming in. I have, I just got this app called slow dive. That's really, really cool. It has like nighttime meditation. I got music going on. I might read, do my little tarot cards, whatever, but I have this, like, I like it. Right. So if right now your nighttime routine is like work, 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 and then watch Netflix and get all stimulated and all this stuff. And then you try to change it into, I'm just going to lay in my bed. Like you're not going to, because that option feels sucky compared to your fun, fun option. So you need to find ways to make your nighttime routine that brings you down something you look forward to. And if you can get more sleep, everything goes up, everything including your body composition. Definitely. And a lot of people who think they have emotional eating, when people tell me they have emotional eating, I'm like, how much sleep are you getting at night? Because a lot of that is just, you're just hungry and your body's looking for food because it's on an energy deficit because you didn't get enough sleep. Yeah. Bedtime, nine o'clock. That's right. Coach Scott, what's up? Good to see you. So, um, okay. Go to bed earlier, get more sleep. It's in the, here's the other part that I was trying to squeeze into it. I'm like, really, truly, if you want to lose weight, just stop eating earlier in the day, right? This is so huge for so many things, not just fat loss and body comp. So like, if you stop eating like intermittent fasters, if you're an intermittent faster and you're like, oh, I don't eat till two or three. And then I eat until like 10 o'clock. That's not it. It's not it. You ain't got it. That is not optimal at all because you're going to sleep with a full stomach. One, you increase your body temperature. So you're not going to get as good as sleep because it got your body temperature rises when you eat food Two, you're trying to digest food. So your body is working instead of having a clear digestive tract to be able to start repairing and doing all of these things. And three, you just ate a bunch of food and you're not moving at all after that. So it's just sitting in your system. So, Like if you can stop eating, like eat earlier, start earlier, go work out and eat after your workout and stop eating around four, five, six, seven at the latest, and then go to bed. You will start leaning out. You will start waking up feeling so much better. You have so much more energy. Your brain can actually get cleansed. Your body can renew. Everything in your health will go up if you sleep more and you don't eat like two to three hours before bedtime. It's so easy. It's so easy when you can just get these lifestyle things and flow. A lot of anxiety and depression. I'm like, yeah, you're sleep deprived. We are just big giant toddlers. I'm not saying that's the only thing about anxiety and depression, but if you were sleep deprived, you're going to feel depressed and you're going to feel more anxious because you're not going to have the bandwidth to deal with life stressors. Have you ever been around a toddler who's sleep deprived? Are they a real fun human being to be around when they need their nap? <laughs> We are just them, bigger. We just hide it more. And then we get on medications and stuff because we need sleep. (sighs) We need sleep. So just make sure, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not knocking, like there's a place for that for sure. But I'm just saying like, make sure those boxes are checked first because you literally cannot make the neurotransmitters for proper mental health when you're sleep deprived. And also you become less insulin sensitive. You know what that means? In a nutshell, that means you eat food and you become fat easier when you're sleep deprived. Literally one night of sleep deprivation makes you less insulin sensitive the next day. And you don't have energy in your workout. You don't have the bandwidth to deal with life stressors. You're a mean or grumpier person to be right. Like everything goes down. Body comp, lifestyle, relationships, uh, longevity, all of it. 
So my biggest tips, one, are around food. Stop labeling food as good and bad. It's not. It is not. It is what do I get as a result of that choice? End of story, period. And when we can start doing that, we can start making mature choices of what do I really want the most. And if if that's dessert or pizza or whatever in that moment and you really want it, freaking enjoy it. And then move on, right? And then the other thing is sleep. Those two, if you can work on those two and stop eating earlier, stop eating before bed. And I, I dare say like, dude, like if you're watching stimulating TV or true crime or like all these things right before bed and you're getting really stimulated, you're just missing out on like the easiest life flow for health ever. If you can just like, think about when you're camping and there's no stimulation and you're sitting around a fire and it's dark I bet you don't stay up until one or two in the morning thinking about all these stressful things because your circadian rhythm is like in flow and you can create that in your own home. So those things, sleep and no good, bad judgment thinking around food. You are always free to choose. Please, please, please let go of that. If you're stuck in like diet culture and shaming yourself around food choices, it's going to make you feel crazy. It's going to make you feel neurotic and like you have disordered eating and all of that stuff. So get rid of it. We are above that. Okay. Alrighty. Thanks for joining me guys. I'm going to go take my son Jerem on a date. I got a hot date tonight. My 14 year old cool little son. (laughs) Okay. See you guys. Bye.